This is one section of my six part flat picking jumpstart course, which takes you from knowing nothing about flat picking all the way to playing your first song. This entire course has tabs that go along with each lesson, and I wanna make sure you have those. Make sure to click the link here in the video or the description and download the full course guide. It has links to all the videos and the tabs that you will need. Hello and welcome to the flat picking jumpstart course. This is a course that's gonna take you from not knowing anything about flat picking all the way to playing your first bluegrass fiddle tune on the guitar, of course. The cool thing is you probably flat pick already, you just don't realize it. If you use a guitar pick with your guitar, you flat pick. But in this course, what we're gonna do is single out the technique and apply it specifically to the acoustic guitar so that you can get the most out of your flat pick be an efficient player and pull as much tone as possible out of your guitar. In this course, we're first gonna look at how to hold your flat pick correctly. Then we're gonna move on to the basic downstroke using what we learned in that first lesson. Then we're gonna look at the golden rule of flat picking, how to tackle eighth notes. This is an essential lesson. Then we're gonna look at the G major scale Moving from the G major scale, we're gonna do the C major scale. And then in lesson six, we're gonna kind of start combining different note values, which means different pick directions, along with some string skipping exercises that'll really give you ultimate command over your flat pick. Then when you're done with lesson six, we're gonna move right into lesson seven, which is your first flat picking song. Billy in the Low Ground, which is a classic tune in the key of C, and using all the techniques you've learned in this course, you should be able to tackle that song no problem at all. So, let's get started. Grab your flat pick, grab your guitar, tune up, and let's get going. So here we are, lesson one of the flat picking jumpstart course. I'm super pumped because in this lesson, we're gonna discuss right hand technique, picking hand technique. And the first thing we have to talk about is how the heck do you hold a flat pick? This is a very commonly asked question and it's a necessary question because there's a lot of pitfalls you can run into when holding the flat pick. Number one, are you even holding it correctly? Number two, the darn thing keeps spinning around when you're playing. And number three, what pick should you even use? So let me discuss that first. First things first is you have to pick the right pick. Now this sounds like an easy step, but really I want you to experiment, okay? Different thickness picks, different shape picks, even different materials. There's tons out there, but the, the rule is when you find the one that you like, stick with it. Buy 10 or 15 of them because you're probably gonna lose one and stick with it. I like the Dunlop Altex 2.0 uh, sharp picks. These are great picks. They're pretty thick, uh, which I like for flat picking. And, you know, I just like the shape and I like the material. I think it sounds really good and uh, it's a pick that I've stuck with for years. So after you've picked the perfect pick for you, you have to hold the darn thing. And here's where things could get tricky. Okay, let me show you how I hold the pick. First, I pretend like I'm holding a TV remote. This is not something I do often, but it's something that I occasionally do. Then I'm gonna place the pick on my index finger. Basically that fat part of the pick, the kind of the, the, the thicker section, you want that on the pad or kind of just south of the pad of your index finger. And that pick, the, the actual pointy part of the pick should be pointing off kind of, I guess, towards the, the neck of your guitar. Once you have it in that position, I want you to take your thumb and push down on that fat part like a button. Okay, just like that. So the pick's there resting, that's kind of right before the thumb gets added. And then as the thumb goes down, it's like a button, okay? And then I'm gonna show you as I tilt my hand forward, that pick point will actually be perpendicular to my thumb. That's an essential piece. That's gonna allow you the most control over your pick and really be, it, it essentially gives the thumb all the power. So again, just go ahead and place the flat part of the pick, or the fat part rather, on the side of your fingertip, kind of a little bit south, we'll say, of the actual fingertip, and then place your thumb right on top of that part. Again, the, the pick, the point of the pick should be perpendicular to the thumb, and that is the proper way to grip the pick. Now, moving from the grip of the pick, we wanna actually, I call it using the force, okay? The acoustic guitar doesn't have any tone controls, and that's kind of a beautiful thing, I think. 
but your tone control actually lies within the flat pick. Not only your tone, but your volume as well, and that's controlled by how tightly you grip the pick. If you grip the pick very tightly, you'll have basically a, a, a louder, it'll be louder. Your volume will be louder. If you grip the pick looser, your volume will be softer, okay? So that is an essential part of holding the pick. If you tighten up your grip, the pick's gonna have, it's gonna feel stiffer and you're gonna address the strings with more force, hence the louder volume. Conversely, if it's looser, it'll be a little bit quieter because the pick's gonna give a little bit, okay? Moving from that, so we have how to hold the pick, then we have how much force you hold the pick with. I want you to know that your thumb is really in the power position here. It basically acts like a toggle switch. And I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see this. As I pick, I'm gonna exaggerate, my thumb is doing a lot of work. It's pushing on the downstroke and almost pulling on the upstroke. It's a delicate balance between my index finger and my thumb, but Again, this is exaggerated, but this is kind of the motion that's happening when I'm picking. This allows me to address the strings at a 45 degree angle, which is essential for good tone and having your pick move through the string. With flat picking, we're not just trying to gently pick the string and pull it away. We wanna pick through the string so we get good tone and great volume. So again, when I'm down picking, I'm gonna address the string at a 45 degree angle and I achieve that by toggling the thumb downwards. Conversely, when I'm up picking, I do the pull motion with the thumb and the index finger, and I go up. So that's kind of the, the action there. This, again, is exaggerated, just so you can kind of see the, the, the action in its full effect. So down picks, 45 degrees down, up picks, 45 degrees up. It's not an exact science. I don't want you to get your protractor out, but it certainly helps to angle the pick down on a downstroke and angle it up on an upstroke. So once you have the pick held properly, your thumb has the proper grip, and you're using the correct angles, whether you're down picking or up picking, it's crucial to relax. I know there's a lot of things floating around, a lot of things to remember, but, but do remember this. The more tension that you hold, the harder it's gonna be to flat pick, even at slower speeds. So I want your thumb to be relaxed, I want your wrist to be relaxed, your elbow, and your shoulder. The more tension you hold, the more rigid you're gonna feel and the more mistakes you'll make and the more kind of foreign the flat pick feels. So if you're, if you're nice and loose and relaxed, the flat pick almost feels like an extension of your hand and that's really what we're going for. Now, as you start this flat picking course, it, it's new, so you're gonna hold tension. I don't want you to beat yourself up too much, okay? Just be aware of that tension that you hold so when you refine your technique, you can say, oh, that's one of those sections where I hold a lot of tension in my wrist. I wanna loosen up a little bit. And of course, to do this, remember to breathe. Last but certainly not least in regards to the flat pick, holding it, etc., I mentioned that the flat pick is essentially like your tone control. And I mean this because depending on where you place the flat pick on your string, it will yield a different tone. The closer to the neck or over the sound hole, you'll get a much warmer tone like so. But as I move it back towards the saddle, it's gonna be much sharper and kind of a, a little bit more articulate. I'll give you an example. I'm gonna start by the sound hole and then move back towards the bridge like so. As you can see, the tone varies greatly depending upon where the pick strikes the string. I want you to keep that in mind. Generally speaking, for a lead, I'm closer to the saddle because the string offers a little bit more tension and I like that more articulate sound. Conversely, if I'm playing rhythm, I'll be over the sound hole because I like that fuller, more warmer sound. So there you have it. That is how to hold your flat pick. There's a lot of things to keep in mind, but just now that you're conscious of them, you're already taking steps in the right direction. So I want you to work on holding your flat pick, and once you have it down and feel comfortable, let's move on to lesson two where we'll discuss the downstroke. You've just finished watching one part of my six part flat picking jumpstart course. This is a course that's gonna take you from not knowing anything about flat picking all the way to playing your first tune. Now, each lesson in this course has tab that accompanies it, and I wanna make sure that you have it. So make sure to click the link here in the video or in the description and download the free course guide. It contains video links to all the lessons and tabs for each lesson. Thanks a lot for checking it out and I'll see you on the next lesson.